the second part of the two-step protocol has two main purposes. One is to calm the body, and the other is to clarify the mind. Because when you're triggered above a seven, you're not clear, you're distorted, we're, we're activated. And if you're not clear, you can't have clarity. And if you don't have clarity, you don't have wisdom, and, and it's uh, we're not going to make the right decision most of the time. So the first step is to calm the body, and the second, second possibility is to clarify the mind. We're going to give you three techniques in each category. Coming right up, you're going to hear diaphragmatic breathing, followed by... Ocean tide breathing followed by movie mindfulness technique. That's for calming the body. And for clarifying the mind, we're going to have the situation story technique followed by the usefulness and truthfulness techniques and automatic alternatives and your game plan. Cue card at the end. All right. Buckle up your seatbelts. Here we go. the two-step protocol to help you overcome super strong emotions you're like when is this guy gonna stop with this celebration well I'm not because I'm excited that I have the opportunity to do this with you and that I have the opportunity to channel this information into your life wow Negative great thoughts. now there's a difference between a situation and the story I'm telling if I get home from work my wife has you know had a hard day with our six children and she's stressed out. And I walk in and she says, Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you're home. Where have you been all day? What's going on? I need your help. I'm like, whoa. Now, what's really going on is she's stressed. She needs my help. And I, I should be ready to help. But my mind, being a dumb dude, would say to me in the past, Hey, well, what type of greeting is this? Well, well, I work hard all day and you, you can't say hi. And, you know, give me, give me a hug and da 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 da. Okay. Well, the truth is that's a story. The situation is the situation. That's the facts. That's the reality. And I don't see it because I'm telling myself a story in my head. What's the story? I know, well, what is my wife doing? I'm like, okay, you know, like a, she should greet me in a certain way. And this isn't right. And, and this is a repeating pattern. And I'm stuck again, like we said in the beginning, on intentional self-absorption. I'm not seeing the whole reality out there. So if I could stop that. And, and make a differentiation between a situation and a story. So we have an exercise for you to do that. I want you to take four different situations and you're gonna map out what's the difference between the situation part of it and the story I'm telling. And then, maybe you wanna tell a new story. Let's think of a couple examples. Let's say you arrive at work and the boss says grumpily, it's about time you showed up. Now, the boss is in a bad mood. What story are you telling about that? What's the situation? The situation is just the facts that you and your boss would agree about. It is. You showed up late, and he explained in a negative tone of voice, it's about time you showed up. Now, what's the story you're telling? What a jerk. He never treats me well. I don't know if I want to work here anymore. This is ridiculous. Now, again, unintentional self-absorption from those distortions. Okay, maybe that's not correct. Is that really useful? Is that gonna bring me a better day? What story would serve me better? Hmm. My boss is right. I don't really appreciate the negativity, but you know what? I'm gonna make a bigger effort to be here on time. Yeah, and you know, my boss is my boss. I mean, yeah, I don't take it personally. He, he can speak how he wants. All right, another one. Let's say you're a younger person in college and you get a bad grade on the test and you think, oh my God, I'm never going to pass this course. Situation is you got a bad grade on the test. The story is, oh my God, I'm going to fail out. I'm never going to pass this test. You're like projecting into the future this dramatic story that you don't even know it's going to be. So is that useful? No, not for most people. And, you know, what story do you want instead? Okay, I hope those examples and explanation of the concept were clear. Now let me give you some instructions about how to do this exercise. First, you're going to define three elements, the situation and the story and a possible new story. Okay, 
The situation is the facts. That is what anybody watching would agree upon. Me, the boss, you. And we're working on differentiating the story from the situation. So you're going to pull out that story from, so it's not fused as one. So if you're worried about losing your job and you, the boss gives a bad look and you're thinking your mind says those automatic negative thoughts and stories, those ants are dancing in your brain again, and you're going to say, well, what's the situation? It's just the facts. Write down the facts in the first box. So you're going to say, boss has a negative look on face. I see it. I had one bad review out of 12 in the last three years. My story is, oh man, uh, here we go again. You see, the boss is going to fire me. I've already gotten fired from three jobs. I'm never going to have enough money. I'm going to go bankrupt, lose my house, lose my life. And what if, what if, what if, if? And then, you know, and then we're going to learn more about it later. But at this point, you could add, you could just stop there. And then the third step is, is this story working for me? And is it useful? Does it really seem true? And instead, write a new story after you have it really clear. And go back and look at it. You know what? I have no idea what he's thinking. And I know that he has you know, trouble with his children, and maybe he's just in a grumpy mood about them. And really, rationally, there's very little probability that I'm going to lose my job. Okay. So you write a new story. So that's how it works. There's a number of blank boxes in your PDF file. So go ahead and try you know, two or three. And let me remind you, what is the purpose of this exercise anyways? We're on a part of the second step of the two-step protocol, and our job is to now begin to clarify the mind. When we were up in a 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 out of 10, the mind is frozen, and you don't have clarity. You're not clear. And if you're not clear, you won't have clarity. And if you don't have clarity, you won't make the right decision. You won't do what's wise. So we're working on getting the wisdom out of our mind, and we're clarifying the difference between what is our perspective and what are the facts of reality and then trying to make a better decision. And this is one way to do that. And now that my mind's back, that I'm down in a stable and reliable five. Circuit break before it's too late. Get a stable five and stay alive. <laughs> it's just a dumb song to help you remember. And you do this, you do this, and then... But I would recommend that you do a few now, three to five, either on your own or if you're doing this in a group, with a group or a partner or your therapist, and then do two or three every day, even if nothing bad is happening. You remember the past because you got to get ready for the unexpected, the expected unexpected is going to strike again, and it keeps striking until we get it right. All right, here we go with the next part of this. We're going to learn about usefulness and truthfulness and a few other aspects. Here we go. So now that you've got your story correctly identified, it's time to do something about the story. And yeah, you wrote a new story, but this is maybe the next step that you can use. And you can use this as a standalone. When you've identified a story or a thought or a belief that you wish you weren't having or you know it's irrational, you know it's not helping you, you know it's not true, here's some light in the moment ways to deal with it. And in other courses that we have, we have a much more extensive and involved, useful, deeper way of doing all of this. But we're talking about in the moment. And right now, we're in the two-step protocol for super strong emotions. And I'm so excited. Let's celebrate. When's this guy going to knock it off? Never. Because this is great and it's, it's a shortcut. What the, I wish I knew this 10 years before I finally figured all this stuff out with the help of smart therapists and, and, and rabbis and mystics and, you know, the whole crew. So get excited, get excited. So in this, in this part, you know, you've identified that story. Oh, my God, the boss is going to fire me. Oh, my wife doesn't like me. Oh, I won't be able to make the money I need. Blah, 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 blah. So when my mind's doing that and I can identify it and I want to get rid of that, what I'm going to do is... In addition to writing a new story, another way to deal with that is just to say, is this truthful? Is this true? And just stop and think about, is there any distorting, magnifying, am I mind reading, am I predicting the future? And there are these categories called distortions or reality filters 
that in the Course on Thoughts we get deep into. But for this point, you don't need to know about that. Just ask yourself, is it true? My children have no respect for me. Is that true? Well, it feels that way. But is that true? Keep asking yourself, is that really true? Is that really true? Just hammer away at it a little bit. Is that really true? And think about it. Is that really true? Now, wait a second. They have shown me respect 45 times this week, and they've shown me disrespect maybe eight times. No, so I, in this moment, they're being really disrespectful, but really, no, they don't, they don't. So, you know, now I've got a new thought, a new story, right? You know what? They do respect me, but this was a bad, this was a bad moment. Okay, now I've got a new story. Good, good. Another important question, sometimes something is really true, or it seems really true, or it's mostly true. And we like to talk about here moving from truthfulness to usefulness. Okay, it's true. You have a learning disability. It's true. You can't get organized. It's true. You have cheated or stolen or hurt people. I'm a bad guy. Is it really true you're a bad guy? Is that a useful thought? See, is this useful? Yeah, because it's going to help me, you know, not do those things again. Is it really helping you? No, it just makes me feel bad about myself. So is this useful? No. Again, hammer. This is hammer away at these questions. Is it useful? No. Is it useful? No. Is it useful? No, it's not. Okay, what would I rather be thinking? Is it useful? What would I rather be thinking? What story would I rather tell ourselves? In the other course, we will talk about ants, automatic negative thoughts. And I add an extra step, automatic negative thoughts and stories. We have these automatic stories, these automatic thoughts. So what are you going to do about it? You can ask, is it true? Or alternatively, if it seems true, is it useful? Is it useful? And then rewrite that thought, rewrite that story. This is a fundamental thing, and it's great if you can get some space from those disturbing thoughts. Okay. Now, in the next um, section, we're going to turn our attention to alternatives to our automatic patterning, because that's where you're going to make the wrong decision right now. Again, this second step of the two-step protocol is coming to clarify the truth and help us to make a wise decision instead of something that we regret once again. Okay, so again, there's practice tables in the packet where you're gonna put down the thought or the story and then beside it or below it, depending how your packet is, you're going to ask, is it useful, is it useful? No, it's not useful. Instead, I'd rather be thinking blank, fill it in and practice, practice, practice. Build that mental muscle. So that when it comes to the, the expected, unexpected, you're ready. Okay, stay tuned for the next part of Super Strong Emotion. So really the final step in this process, we're going to deal with alternatives to the autopilot. So steer clear of those strong emotions, those automatic negative thoughts, those ants are dancing in your brain again. You got to get an alternative. Is it true? Is it useful? And finally, when we have strong emotions, we react certain ways. Every time the guy's angry, he yells at the person in front of him. Every time you're stressed from work, you come home and you take it out on your children. Every time you feel fat and judge yourself, you eat more. <laughs> it's amazing what we do. Every time you are strung out and stressed, you go exercise in such an intense way that you're even more exhausted. So we have these negative automatic reactions. So the first step of this part of the tool is just to identify what is the reaction that I would naturally do in the situation. Uh, normally, when somebody hurts me and makes me angry, I will go and tell them off. And tell them how bad they're being to me and how, what a bad person they're being. Uh, and what kind of what kind of results does that get me? It's really bad results because they get more mad at me and they're even worse than me. Okay. And maybe there's other things. I yell at them. I storm out of the room. I stop talking to them about it. And we want to have an alternative. So an easy way to remember this is when Otto, the pilot, is piloting the plane, how's that plane go? Is it crash and burn? Is it fly to the sky? Okay. 
you write down in this tool, this step of the tool, what are my automatic autopilot ways of responding? Are those useful to me right now? Are they useful? No. No, 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 I'm going to get a bad result once again. So then we want an alternative. That's it. What makes sense in this situation? I really want my friend to understand where I'm coming from. Okay. So normally I yell at him. How about if I just calmly explain to him, you know, listen, 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 uh, Jerry, I really want you to understand where I'm coming from. I'm feeling mad inside, but I don't, I don't want to hurt you just because you're hurting me. So are, are you willing to listen to me right now? So I'm going to be kind and, and ask permission to share. So that's going to be my alternative. Maybe I just know that I can't handle it. So my alternative is going to be go take a break and <clears throat> come back later. Maybe write him a letter and email. So the idea is to sit and think about what makes sense. What's wise here? What's going to give me more of the outcome that I'm looking for? Okay, I think you get it. So go ahead, back in that packet, it's going to have, you know, you're going to list some of the, you know, the situation and your normal autopilot reaction, and then some alternatives, some alternatives, and which one's useful, which one's useful, it's strategic, great. So now you're going to practice three or four or five examples, and again, every day practice a couple, you got to be ready for the expected unexpected, I guarantee it'll be back, and... <laughs> to remind you where we're at, this is the two-step protocol for super strong and extreme emotions. Rage, panic, guilt, shame, anxiety, disgust, terror, powerlessness, helpless, all those type of emotions. And the first step in the two-step protocol is circuit break before it's too late. Get down to a stable five so you stay alive and happy. Now we're in the stable five. There's no spiking. And the first thing we chose is either we're going to calm the body further or we're going to clarify the mind or both. So here we are clarifying the mind and we're nearing the end of the tool set that we're offering you. So now it's time to go back to the situation or to disengage from the situation. Maybe you're going to say, hey, look, I need to think this through, Betty. I'll be back in 10 minutes and we'll talk about it. And then you can go and do further clarification, further Clarifying what is my truth and what is my wisdom here. And then you're going to go back and do it. So that's the second step of the two-step protocol. And finally, what we're going to do next is we're going to make a card. You can't imagine how many people, including myself, find themselves triggered in the moment and either just wake up at the end of the process and like, oh my God, I did it again. What is wrong with me? Or... You've been to therapy, you've been to IOP, you've been to PHP, you, 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 you've watched programs, you've learned tools, and as much as you know them in the moment, like, you don't even think of them. And I learned from Jeff Riggenbach, CBT teacher, this cue card concept. And he's got some great books, you can check them out. The cue card is essentially just a cue. It's a memory device to remind you of what you plan to do. So we're going to give you some examples, and you're just going to write your final cue card that you've developed through this course. So it's going to be step one, a circuit breaking, one of those six techniques, maybe a second backup, and step two, you know, I have the movie mindfulness technique, and then I have the, I'm going to use the story and autopilot. You don't have to use them all. Whatever you think makes most sense for you. And then you're going to keep it in your pocket. Invest, put it on cardstock, print it out, write it out, make it into art, put it on your iPhone. And if you have a really good relationship with a friend, give them a copy and say, hey, bud, remember this? Okay. So there's a few different kinds of cue cards. You can keep it really simple. You'll see an example of that. All it says is two-step or cue card, and then it says step one, one word triangle, triangle breathing, and the second word, break, the breathing break. Step two, mindfulness, and autopilot. That's it. Sometimes it's a little easier in the moment. Just a quick little cue. Option one. Option two, full written out with a full reminder. You know, step one protocol, circuit break before it's too late. Technique go to one, go to two. Protocol step number two, 
calm the body, clarify the mind. Go to tool number one. Go to tool number three, two and three. Across the top, you can put a title. I renamed it DDD. Deal different. Deal differently with difficulty card. Okay, you can put it up there, really full, really abundant in words. And finally, you could do it some other way. You could do big bubble letters. You could, you know have explanations of each technique, you know, triangle breathing with a little triangle, seven, 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 and the breathing break with the visualization or, you know, the ice technique, you put a little bowl. So the idea is just whatever is going to help you in the moment. Now, we have also another kind of cueing in the bonus tracks, which is sometimes hearing someone talk to you in the moment is really good. So another thing you can do is record yourself. Daniel, You've been here before. Do you really want to have to clean the mess up after this in yourself? You're going to be down and out for two days, dude. Come on. You know this is not personal. Don't take it personally again. Come on. Use the techniques. You can do this. And you can kind of, you know, coach yourself and cheerlead yourself, right? So sometimes it's nice to come from yourself, but also sometimes it's nice to come from someone else. So one thing I've done for clients and I'm going to do for you is I have a few clips and, and, and some uh, anger, anxiety, and it's me talking to you with the same type of language reminding you. So you can also use that. You can have it on your phone, and when you're triggered, you can just press play. And you'll hear that, that reminder just reminding you to bring up that concept again. Okay, so go inside your packet now. Write out that cue card. Write out a few forms. If you can, print it up. And practice, 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 practice for... The expected unexpected, I can guarantee it'll be back. And that's it. That's the two-step protocol. In summary, one more time, just to bring it home. Step number one, circuit break before it's too late. Down to a stable five so you can thrive. Step two, calm the body. Clarify the mind so that you don't get left behind in your distorted, self-absorbed realities. Instead, your wisdom will come through and help you and you'll be able to come out with a totally different, with God's help, result. So that's it. Get excited. Go practice. Make a chart every day. Now, thank you so much for joining us. This is Daniel Levy, your host, the Good Mood Coach, LCPC, Super Strong Emotions.